Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I am sorry. I apologize that this video is late. Typically, these uh, channeled videos, we go through these channelings, are released on Tuesday. As many of you know, I have been quite sick. Um, very vintage of me, but I got the flu, uh, the good old-fashioned flu. Um, I've had a low-grade fever not really low grade, but a fever nonetheless for um, about nine days. And I am finally back and filming today after literally nine days in the bed. And so I appreciate all the people who had to reschedule with me for this week. I super appreciate your flexibility. Um, thank you so much to Cindy from Sacred Garden Yoga for subbing for me. I really, really, really appreciate it. And I'm happy to be back. Knock on wood. I'm some, yep, wood, my desk is wood, knock on wood, that I am on the up, the up, uh, getting better. So we're going to go ahead and start with filming again. So anyway, today we are looking at the second part of the great human potential walking in one's own light. And if you guys saw the episode from last week, the first part of this, I got such good responses. I was blown away by um, everything that I read in that first part. Again, it was just confirming a lot of the things that we've been speaking about on this channel. And so um, if you did miss that, I will put that in the description box below for you so you can catch up. So I was going to do for my second installment, I was going to do a longer installment, but because I have been sick and because I have um, another, I'm planning on shooting on uh jb jackson's channel this evening with uh his uh boy bryce one of his co-hosts and um another guy that they work with uh, uh he gets friends with davy i'm going to be shooting with him tonight for his channel for the missing books of the bible which is really really super exciting to be talking about it with those guys they're all really funny boys so i can't wait to see what kind of jokes they um they pull no pressure or anything to them um but i will let you guys know once that episode is ready to be um or available on their channel um i uh, i believe they pre-record like i pre-record so it won't be available right away and so i will um I will definitely let you guys know when that show is available, but that is why I've limited what I'm recording right now because I'm trying to save my energy for that show later tonight since it's on somebody else's channel. I want to be on my A game. So we're going to do a smaller section today for part two. And of course, before we get into it, just a brief word from our sponsors, ASEA. Without ASEA, this channel would not be possible. Our awesome patrons and our awesome sponsors are who make this channel channel available for you to watch for free. And so um, we believe in giving gratitude in the, on this channel. Um, we're not fans of entitlement on this channel or spoiled behavior on this channel. And so I, for one, am super grateful to my sponsors, ASEA, as well as my patrons and my producers on this channel for, for affording me the ability to do this for you for free. And so without further ado, here is a message from our sponsors. If you've been on this channel for a while with me, you know that I am a firm believer in the power of food. The power of food being your medicine and being your spiritual source of an energy supply. After all, matter or nature is the Shakti of consciousness. It is the Shakti and the expression of the soul. If you've been on this channel for a while, you know that I very much promote a plant-based diet along with the Ayurvedic system of knowing what your actual dosha is. With that being said, in my life, in my adult life, I have have tried many many supplements before and you guys know that I am a huge fan of the ASEA redox supplement the, the liquid as well as the gel but did you also know that ASEA has a vitamin line that's right it's called the ASEA via there are four different types of supplements that ASEA is offering this one is the source which is whole food and micro 
macronutrient complex. They also have Life Max, which supports a healthy lifestyle. They also have an Omega and they have a probiotic. Now, again, with this being said, I am very much a snob when it comes to supplements. Again, I've, I've been using supplements for a very, very long time because early on in my adult life, especially with my yoga career with Ashtanga Yoga, I realized, again, how important the value of nutrients were to your overall spiritual health. The body is energy and food is energy. And if we're giving our body the correct energy, just like you give your car the correct energy, the correct gas, then your body, your mind, your well-being will work better for you. Now, again, yes, there are lots of supplements out there that are frankly crap. And I was not going to actually try the ASEA supplements when I first started using ASEA because I was health happy with the supplements I had been taking. But one day I was on their website and I was like, you know what? I'm actually just going to try it. I'm going to order these vitamins and I'm just going to see how I like them. My boyfriend also is the same of me. He himself is very skeptical of supplements. He's been doing supplemental work for literally 30 years now. And so for him, he too was skeptical. Well, the first supplement we got was the source. In this supplement, it has spirulina, alfalfa leaf juice, wheatgrass juice, barley grass juice, oat grass juice, pomegranate juice, ossi berry juice, raspberry juice, blueberry juice, cranberry juice, grape juice, goji berry juice, sea kelp, broccoli, cabbage, parsley, kale, dandelion, and broccoli sprouts. It says on the box, a food-based micronutrient complex with a unique blend of superfoods, which a lot of what I just read to you is considered a superfood, as well as plant extracts and trace minerals. Now again, once I got the bottle, I was still a little skeptical. I again am a creature of habit and I liked the supplement I was on. But right when I opened this, I could smell the potency of the capsules inside. I knew the minute I opened this, that this was going to be good. The same thing with the Life Max. Now for me, I do struggle with inflammation because I do have a propensity to have some arthritic flare-ups. This has a lot of turmeric in it and turmeric is nature's anti-inflammatory. Basically, it's like nature's ibuprofen. And as it says on the back, that this is designed to counter the negative effects of aging. This supplement contains natural herb extracts, which increase energy levels, support the immune system, and promote healthy inflammatory responses, support joint health, and promote a healthy, more youthful appearance. Now again, these two, in my opinion, are the Mac Daddies. And I will say, two days after my boyfriend being on these supplements, he came home from work saying that he could not believe the amount of energy he had that day. He was so impressed by the quality of, especially this one, of these vitamins, that there was no way he would ever go back to the vitamins that we were originally taking. Now, if you go to the ASEA website, which will be linked down in the description box below, you will see this little category of cell nutrition. Just click on that below and you will see all the different vitamins here. Once again, if you click on the individual vitam vitamins, you can see more details about each vitamin. Now, as you guys know, or if you've been on this channel for a while, you know I am a vegetarian. The omega does have extracts from the fish, um, which obviously a lot of omega uh, products do have fish in them but from what i have heard so i don't take the omega but from what i have heard from people who do take the omega their biggest biggest takeaway from a sia's omega is that they're not left with a fishy taste in their mouth for the rest of the day now i personally am hoping that one day a sia will make an omega supplement that is good for us vegetarians just like they have done with their collagen radiance they've made the collagen radiance vegetarian friendly. So anyway, guys, just another wonderful thing that is brought to you by ASEA. 
If you are interested or want more information on the Vitamin Line or any of ASEA's products, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. If you are contacting Jay from a country outside of the United States, make sure you let him know that and make sure you add a plus one to his phone number. That is our country code and make sure you double check that the vitamin line is available in your country that will have to do with whatever red tape ASEA has to go through with your health and, and administration with your government so just double check on that it is available in the United States I think it's available in most countries at this point but again for more information text J text Bryce info to 321-216-8047 if you're already sold on these vitamins and you want to try them I will put a link down in the description box that takes you directly to the vitamin so it makes it easier for you just to quickly purchase. If 30 days goes by and you're not happy with the product, ASEA will offer you a full refund, no questions asked. All right, you guys, with that being said, back to our show. All right, the construct of your dimension and breaking the mental barrier. This is page 15 if you are following along in your own book. This topic covers a number of things. First, we will start by talking briefly about how to better understand the dimensional structure. For you to be able to leave the three-dimensional structure for good, you have to understand how it is built. Letting go of the 3D mindset will allow you to focus on the multidimensional perspective. Those of you reading this all know by now that the 3D mind was created to limit to give you the illusion of separation so that you could have a unique set of vibratorial experiences and make unique choices based on the perception of separation. We talk about this a lot, especially over on Aquarius Rising Africa. We came here to feel the friction of the negative path, which is that idea of separation. And this is how so many religions have made speaking of the missing books of the bible this is how so many religions have made their money have garnered their power is by convincing you that you not only are separate from your fellow man but you are also separate from god and this frankly is not true you are never separate from god god is always with you you are born in the grace of god and so um but that that friction of feeling as if you are separate is what brings you to the wisdom of understanding you are not separate. And so we, we again, we speak about this a lot, especially over on Aquarius Rising Africa, very, very important concept to understand. Of course, it is impossible for you to be separate because you are always connected to everyone and everything. In the process of the dissension into the 3D reality, you needed the illusion of time as it allowed you the opportunity to make adjustments so that you were creating via your thoughts, emotions, and feelings weren't immediately projected. Frequencies do not move through time at the same rate. Lower thoughts move through time at a slower rate. Time gave you space between what you were pulsing out and what was reflected back or experienced. Time is a very important con component of the 3D reality, but is, it is an illusion. And we want you to know that your perception of this illusion does not exist in any other dimension. In other dimensions, time is viewed simply as a marker for an event. And the uh, Emerald Tablets also spoke about time as well, that it's an illusion here for third density. We know that time is actually reciprocal, moves in cycles, not linear. All right. One of the most important things to let go and break from your mental cycle is the idea of time. For many years now, you have noticed a big shift, a change in how you experience time. You are most certainly feeling the compression of it. You may not realize that it is time that is creating these increased sensations or intensities that you are all going through. As we said, frequencies do not move thr through time at the same rate. The higher you go in frequency, the more time appears to compress. Ten years ago, you played out your dramas in an extended period of time, but now it is done in a relatively short period. To give you an example, what you would have taken a year to work out now takes about four days. This is why everything feels more intense. This is happening because you are getting higher in frequency. 
As you move beyond 3D and into 5D, you will feel that time is collapsing upon itself. And when you break the mental barrier, you can shift your focus to a multidimensional perspective. You will no longer look at things in a linear timeline, and you can start focusing on multiple realities in a single moment. It's so interesting. While I was sick, I was uh, laying in bed watching a bunch of movies uh, from my childhood. I actually like finished all the new the new New York Housewives series, and I was like, I'm just going to go back and rewatch some of these movies from when I was a child. And one of those movies was The Mighty Ducks. Do you guys remember The Mighty Ducks? Great movie. Great movie. And I was, but I was watching it. And I was thinking about everything we used to do in a day when I was a child, like go to school, after school activities, homework, playing outside, like all these things we fit into a day that the day te- seems too short to fit into now. And so this this concept of time is changing. Um, I've I've noted I was nodding while reading that because I get so many emails from you guys and comments from you guys saying the same thing that you feel like time is speeding up that it's not as as long as it used to be when when you were younger, not just younger as a child, but even when we were like in our early 20s, I'm 40 now, you know, it, it's just it's strange this we're all kind of feeling this frequency of time is shifting and changing. So and we know if you're a student of the law of one, you know, it's not just human beings that are on the ascension process. It's also the earth itself. So that would make sense. All right. So we have talked about the 3D and 5D experience, but in truth, you are currently vibrating in 4D. That I don't agree with because that counters with the law of one. Now, if we're talking dimensions, that might be different because dimension is more consciousness, whereas density is what the law of one focuses on. We are very much in third density. We will know when we switch to fourth density, there will be an event that happens that pushes us into fourth density positive. Um, that has not happened yet. We are still in third density. Do not let anybody fool you or trick you into thinking that you're in you're already in a fourth density positive timeline. That is not true. In a fourth density positive timeline, there is no pecking order, so the cabal cannot exist, right? So there will be no government. There will be nothing that we see in a, that's in a pecking order today. And any type of person that's trying to sell you on a pecking order, like sell you that Mr. T is going to be the king or something like that. That's not good, you guys. That's negative. That's the fourth density negative. So just be very aware of these infiltrators and and how they're trying to sell you. There is some people out there trying to sell you on like a one party system when it comes to politics. And I think we can all agree that a two party system doesn't work. But a one party system is even worse. That's the new world order. So we want a multi party system. So be aware of these things, educate yourself on these things, because knowledge is power and knowledge protects. So just make sure you're aware of these things. We might be more of a fourth dimensional way of consciousness, but we are certainly not in fourth density, not yet. Unlike 3D and 5D, which have very fixed constructs or rules to the game, the fourth dimension, so they're talking about dimensions, not density, is a very malleable one. Because the constructs of 3D and 5D are so different, you need an entire dimensional range in which to make the transition from one to the other. You need a matrix in which you could modify the rules to allow for the consciously, for, to allow for consciously adjusting to implementing these new perceptions. Remember, you are playing in a game of dissension and reascension. In this 4D playground, we be, we need both transitions. Many of you think that you are in, in, incarnated at the, at the bottom and work your way up to the top. This is not the case. You are source energy, right? So the pecking order, again, is not good. You are the social memory complex. You are source en- energy. You start at the top, then you fracture and come down. Play in different arenas reconnect with source energy review and project into another game again most of you do not realize that you are residing in the fourth dimension as you are still currently applying 3d rules to the 4d matrix but you can also run 5d programming what we want for you is more of the 5d programming many of you are walking between these two worlds some of you more than others no doubt you've got the theory down But the practical application is still far from being there. Right now, you are in the process of creating new patterns, new neural networks, new habits, and releasing the programs that generate limitation. You are creating your new potential. You have to remember that you are your higher self. It is not something that you have to become 
or something that you have to reconnect with. For you to experience the third dimensional range, you as higher self incarnated and projected into form and then overlaying illusions of separation, creating an ego or personality. Yeah, that's the Shiva and the Shakti. The body that you reside in is the Shakti, is the expression of the soul, right? Is the expression of your own soul's desire. And the ego, the personality, is the false sense of self. We've talked about this so much on this channel because that, again, is the crux of the missing books of the Bible, speaking of the show I'm doing tonight. And also, it's the crux of um, Eastern philosophy, which makes sense, right? Because Yahshua was of Eastern philosophy, not Western philosophy. So, all right. You've created filters to color the perceived reality. All the emotions, feelings, and thought, thought that you have that say that you are separate, that you are not good enough, that you cannot connect, and that you are not lovable are simply an exploration and duality. It is so important to see it that way, an exploration that you decided to undertake. Ding, 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 ding. You created this. Some of you get very upset because you feel that you cannot connect, but in reality, you are exploring and practicing duality and are never, ever separate from self or from source, unless you're an organic portal and you don't have a self or a source, which I'll, we've talked about that before. I'll put that video in the description box below as well if you missed that. If you want to shift your perception from one separation to to if you want to shift your perception from one of separation to one of connection, it is really quite simple. Throughout the day, you can stop and ask yourself, where am I vibrating at the mental, emotional, and physical levels? As you start to check in and readjust yourself, you can create these new habits, these new thought forms, because most of the lower ones are running at a subconscious level. The idea here is to take all of the frequencies that you are running at the subconscious level and become conscious of them. That really is the challenging part for you, but the mechanics of it are quite simple. We are going to give you some simple exercises, but you will see the mind is not like this. It will say to you, oh, it is much more complicated than that. In fact, it is that easy. What is the most challenging for you is the emotional or mental part of letting go. So you must have patience. And if your mind gets challenged in any type of spiritual practice, that's kind of the point. Like your point in a real spirituality is not about like love. Let's just make that very clear. And someone who's trying to sell you that from the very beginning is a con artist. Okay. True spirituality is about the ego death. It's about letting go, as they say, of the false sense of self. And so when you start to do that, you're going to go through a lot of tribulation. There's going to be a lot of friction, a lot of really uncomfortable stuff that you're going to have to face within your own psyche. And so this is why shadow work becomes like key to all of this. And so the mind is going to absolutely push against any type of legit spirit. If the mind is enjoying the spiritual work, then it's probably not spiritual work. The spiritual work is supposed to trigger the mind. Okay. Again, this is why it's super important whenever you get a healing service done, or you go to a yoga class, or you seek out any type of guidance when it comes to this, it is very important to ask the teacher to see their resume. Who is their teacher? How many years have they been practicing themselves? What lineage do they come from? I have all of that on my resume, right? It's important. This is very important so that you don't get conned. Remember, a teacher's job is to eventually not be needed. A leader's job is to always be needed. And leaders are con men. So just protect yourself. Ask those important questions. All right, exercise from 7 to 10 days. As you go through your day, if you take the time to set an alarm once every hour and check in with yourself to see where you are vibrating at the emotional, mental, and physical levels, that will help you to make more conscious choices. For example, ask yourself, do I like where I'm vibrating? Do I want to keep projecting these frequencies? Know that if you keep projecting the same frequencies, they will continue to be reflected back to you in your reality. What you may find as you start consciously observing your vibration is that your ability to manifest your clarity and how you interpret frequency will vastly be vastly different. Let's say that you want a new job. Maybe emotionally you are all right with it, but mentally perhaps you are saying to yourself, hmm, 
maybe I don't have the qualifications for it. Or another similar thought that keeps you misaligned is what you want. When you check in with yourself once in a while, you can catch or notice those misalignments. Well, that I, I don't... <sighs> If you don't have the qualifications to do something, you don't have the qualifications to do something. And that I don't quite agree with. Like, for example, if you sit there and say, I really want to be a surgeon, but I don't have the qualifications. That's not a misalignment. You don't have the qualifications. If you haven't gone to medical school, then you don't have the qualifications. But that does not mean that you can't get the qualifications, right? If you want to be a healer, you have to actually like go to school to be a healer. You got to go to India. You got to go study and go to school and, and learn how to do this, right? So I definitely want to emphasize that because that I don't quite, I think that's very misleading. And um, we, uh, if you're going to, if you want to do surgery on someone, then if you want, if you have to have surgery done to you. Do you want somebody that's been to medical school or do you want somebody that just really wants to do surgery on you? Pick, take your pick. You're going to want the qualified doctor, right? So anyway, let me start that over again. Let's say that you want a new job. Maybe emotionally you are aligned with it, but mentally perhaps you are saying to yourself, hmm, maybe I don't have the qualifications for it or another similar thought that keeps you misaligned with what you want. When you check in with yourself once in a while, you can catch or notice those misalignments. When you do ask yourself, why am I not releasing these fears or this belief system? How does holding on to this belief serve me? Well, once again, if you don't have the qualifications to do something, meaning the training, then you, that's not a fear holding you back. That's like a legal issue. And that's a, a common sense issue. You know, and that's one of the dangers of like the fake spiritual world, like the fake spiritual world is like, it's cool. Anyone can do it. That's not what the real spiritual world says. Anyone can do it. You just need to have many years of training, intense training, like a doctor or a lawyer. Checking in will give you the opportunity to see that, to see the patterns that you have perhaps not noticed before. You will then start noticing patterns that you have with your coworkers, your family members, or your business relations. It could be stronger in one particular relationship, but usually the same pattern is also present in a weaker form in that other relationship. Bottom line, you have to see how patterns are serving you, how they are maintaining the illusion of separation. You have to release judgment around the idea of separation so you can go into higher perspective about connection. That I do agree with, right? So let's let's rephrase that because I don't like that whole qualification thing. So let's say you want to be a traditional Eastern philosophy yoga teacher like myself. Let's say you want to do that, but you think you don't have what it takes to become that. What you What you're lacking is the idea that you're patient enough to become that. Anybody can, you know, there's steps to take to become what I do. There are definite steps you have to take. You have to find a MISO program run by an authorized or certified teacher here in the United States or whatever it is you live. You have to study under that teacher for a while. Then you have to talk to that teacher about possibly getting to in India. You have to make sure that you practice the full primary series before you go to India, which can, in a lot of cases, take many years to learn. You have to then qualify to go to India. You then have to be accepted. You have to apply and be accepted into the school. Then you have many years of traveling back and forth to India where you're deepening your own study before you're actually granted that authorization. It's possible. You, you, you do have the opportunity to do that. You just, I think what we lack is the patience. We live in a very entitled society, right? I didn't grow up in an entitled society. I grew up in a society where it takes hard work. You can do what you want to do. That's the American dream, but you're going to have to put forth the effort to do it, right? And so that's where I think the, mis the, the disconnect lies. So if you think, God, I really want to be a, a traditional teacher of Eastern philosophy. Okay, well, great, but you can't just be that, right? You have to go through the training. You have to know the knowledge, understand the scriptures, understand the Sanskrit in order to then teach it to others. How can you teach something to others that you don't know yourself? So it's not that it's bad to be like, oh, I need to No, It's a good thing to go. If, if ever, no one went to school and learned under these line, under these Parm gurus, and it would be a shit show. We would never ascend. Right. So, it's saying, okay, I need to be patient with myself and take the steps so that I can meet these qualifications 
to actually do this job. When most of you think of creating, you have a visual image of energy pulsed out and looped back to you. When you seek, when you seek to create, what you seek is to create outside of yourself. And there is an element of time involved in the process of creation. Would you like to start encouraging you? No, I, I don't. Um, this is okay. Loved last week's reading. This week's reading is is really kind of slapping traditional spirituality in the face right now. And um, this is just not acceptable when it comes to traditional. This is setting people up to be conned. What and I'm 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 gonna finish this, but I'm hoping to God this is the one chapter of this book that is just out of speaking of alignment, really out of alignment. Okay, so I really again want to emphasize it takes you came to earth to human to experience, as I said earlier, to experience time, to experience patience, to experience hard work. If you could manifest what you wanted within one day you wouldn't appreciate it. You wouldn't have that depth of wisdom. It's the time that you spend working on these things that gives you your own appreciation for what it is that you are experiencing as a student, as well as someone who will eventually be a teacher or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Think about your college experience if you, know, if you went to university. Think about everything you learned in the process of getting that degree, all the friendships that you made, all of the social experiences that you had, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of them, all of the teachers who made such a positive impact on you and taught you so much more than the subject they were paid to teach you, and the professors and teachers who were shitty. You learned from them as well. You learn not what to, you learn what not to do. There's value in that. Now think about if you have your degree in English, let's say, think about if you just got it overnight. All of those experiences, when you smile, when you think back on your, your university experience, you're not thinking, at least I'm not thinking about the degree. I'm thinking about my friends. Everything I learned socially, the, the nights out of the bars, the laughter right so don't take that for granted entitlement is never good all right so i i would kind of, i mean you can do what you want obviously it's your free will choice but i would just be very hesitant to do this exercise and to think that you deserve to just get something because you want it that's what a spoiled child does you have to earn it you have to earn it all right You are already that which you seek to become. You need only to remove these filters, these false perceptions, these judgments that you have been concerning who you think you are and the stories you are telling yourself. That, okay, but to the person who wrote this book that has Tom Kenyon, that has to do with um, your perception of your ego versus the perception of soul. When they talk about that in the Eastern philosophy, that just has nothing to do with your job. Nothing. Maybe go back and read the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. That has nothing. You and this and this are confusing. Who you? You're confusing the ego with the soul at this point. All right. We see many of you are pushing energetically to get to the other side to that five D level, and that is absolutely vital that you let go of that push to get there. That so they just basically contradicted everything they just said because that I agree with. It's about as cheesy as it says, as it as that saying is, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. It's literally about the journey. The underlying need is almost always fear based. You are holding judgment about where you are in your current reality. As we always tell you, you have to accept where you are to change where you are. The desire to run from your current situation will always call more of that frequency to you that I do agree with. Anytime you are thinking about the future or the past, you are siphoning off energy. In fact, you are not allowing yourself to run at full power. Instead, you are sending energy to another now moment of which your soul's essence is not focused. Also, it is an indication that you are in the victim perpetrator mindset. Your desire to look down those other timeline means that you are no longer engaged in the present. There is something that is driving you from a state of fear to go back to the past or towards the future. What is it? 
It could be security or a safety issue. It could also be separation, anxiety, or abandonment. For sure, there is a fear at the root of it. We hear some of you say, but I don't need to plan for my future. But what we are talking about here is your random thoughts throughout the day. If you wish to explore other timelines, then we recommend you sit down with a specific intention to do so. Be very clear about your purpose for viewing them. There is a tremendous amount of energy and frequency for you to explore in every now moment. There is so much data that the soul is hungry for and so curious about in each now moment that you are never, ever going to be bored. If you are bored, you are not in the now. Being present in the now is about being conscious with every single breath. At this time, you have the opportunity to learn to be very clear about frequency and how you are vibrating in your energetic field. This is what changes your reality. If you want to change your reality, you have to change your energetic field. We will just end this subject by saying that when you are heart-centered and in alignment, fully open and connected, it is as if you are standing in a giant dot of stream that is about six feet wide. This dot of stream is your connection to higher conscious awareness, source, your guides, celestial friends, and the Akashic records. But when you are misaligned, especially when you are in deep fear, the dot of stream shrinks down to about an inch wide. Consequently, it takes longer to download or to access higher information, and you are limited in your connection to the infinite restorative powers of source. Not only are you restricting the intake of new energy, but you are also expending more as being closed or in, or in resistance requires a great deal more energy than being in divine flow. And we're going to end that here today, guys, just because again, I've been a little sick. We will start next week with the absolute truth, which is a chapter I'm actually very excited about. So anyway, leave me your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section again. Once again, once the uh, episode with Davey is available on his channel, I will be sharing it on my community tab to make sure you guys get a chance to watch, especially since you guys have been with me from the beginning going through the juicy, juicy, juicy missing books of the Bible. Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day.